Tuesday. Welcome to Terrific Tuesday. Terrific Tuesday is going to be celebrating women, women with power, women with persuasion, women with a little bit of know-how. And I think I chose probably the perfect guest for this because my guest, Melinda Mullinax, has got the power, the persuasion, and a whole lot of know-how. And you're going to get to know her in just a few minutes. But we want to share a little bit of uh, just a little stuff for you first. And uh, we're going to show you some photographs. We've got some very special birthdays. We've got a couple of pictures of this young lady as she was traveling. She loves music and she loves to go where the music is. So we're going to show you some photos and we're also going to, sh also going to show you a video that I did just doing breakfast and talking about the women of America decide what do you buy, what do you cook, how do you prepare, and how do you budget. And so, yeah, today's program is going to be about women. And we're going to start out with honoring somebody I really, really admire, Harris Faulkner. I watch Harris all the time on Outnumbered on Fox and um, love her attitude, love her positive, positive thinking. And I really, really love that she supports what she believes in. It probably came from having a father who went to Vietnam. And if you haven't seen the special that she did on Fox about traveling and going back and walking the same footprints that her father walked. So check that out. But again, Harris Faulkner, and it says, Faulkner Focus Anger Outnumbered co-host is starting 2024 on a ratings roll. If you watch her, you will become addicted to her. She is cool, she is on point, and she is like me. A Christian conservative so enough said about that now we're going to show you some photos and um, in these photos you will see a lady that I've known for a very very long time Miss Caroline Plant who is celebrating her 90th birthday the day that I met Miss Caroline she walked into the Woodbridge Inn restaurant with her husband and her young son Rocky and there she is in Rocky and I used to call her Elizabeth Taylor if you look in the corner of the photo with she and Jack and Rocky she looked like Elizabeth Taylor, so when she would come in, I'd say, oh my gosh, there's that beautiful Elizabeth Taylor lady. She is 90 years old, and she is still absolutely beautiful. So happy, happy birthday to a dear, dear friend who is celebrating it in Florida, as all old people should be doing. So, <laughs> so there you go. We're also going to share some photos that um, are of Melinda and her family and some of her friends. Her mama just celebrated her 90 what birthday? 95th. 95th. And your daddy is about to celebrate? His 90th. His 90th. So we will just say mama was a powerful woman and she had a younger man. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Isn't it amazing? And didn't they just celebrate their 61st anniversary? Yes. yes Isn't that recently. something in today's world to have made it 61 years? Trace, have we got those photos? Are we getting them? Here we go. Okay, when, when we think about today's world, okay, who are those people with you? That is a group called Runaway June. Uh, they have changed uh, two, two of the seniors uh, since they first uh, came out several years ago. The very tall blonde, uh -huh. do you know who she is? No, but she's about six feet tall, isn't she? <laughs> she is. That is John Wayne's granddaughter. Oh, wow. How cool is that? Yes. How yes. cool is she's that? She's very talented. Uh, she just recently had a baby. She got married, I think, a couple years ago. Uh -huh. uh, they are super sweet. They're super wow. talented. Beautiful. Beautiful group. And, yeah. Uh, and yeah. they travel all across the United States. They've played out in the... Uh, Montana, Wyoming, you know, a lot of places uh -huh. I like to go to out west. Right, yeah. Now, do they do just country music, traditional yes. country? Yes, yes. I love that. Do any of them write it, or do they just pick up? Uh, I think they are writers. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure. Jennifer's been in the business, like I said, um, probably a little bit longer than the other uh -huh. two. Um, Natalie is the one that's on the left of me, uh -huh. and I cannot remember the girl's name on the right because uh, she's very, very new, uh -huh. uh, but they're all super talented. Beautiful. And, and a lot of them, if it's like most artists uh, that I know, they write a certain percentage mm -hmm. of their music, but not all of the music. Right. They, they usually right. uh, get in little writer's groups. Yeah, that is cool. Well, let me tell you a little John Wayne trivia. My daddy used to drive for John Wayne. When he lived in California, he drove oh, him wow. around. <laughs> that is I super said, cool. Isn't that a cool thing? Yeah. Yeah, that is cool. Now, tell me who you're with there. 
Okay, uh, to the left of there is our good friend Larkin, and on the far left is my sister Kay. There they you are go. neighbors, That's and right. we're also really, really good friends. We're travel buddies. Um, I have been going to CMA Fest since 2012. I did miss uh, two years, of course, and it's because they didn't have it. Uh, mm, COVID hit right. in 2020, 2021, so we took other trips. We went to Okaloosa Island and mm -hmm. did a little beaching instead. Yeah. Uh, but I have been going to CMA Fest since 2012. My cousin really got me into it because I was always more into rock music and pop music, you know, growing up. Uh -huh. I liked all the, all the old 80s bands, uh -huh. your Aerosmiths yeah. and Motley Crue and all yeah. that. Um, but I've, I've, I've like almost all music, I'm not really into opera and, and some of the others, but um, Nashville, it, it's a great city. Uh, you know, there's a lot of nice people there. Mm -hmm. You always usually run into somebody you know when you go to Nashville. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have you been to Tootsie's Orchid Lounge? I have. I yeah, have seen yeah. a few artists there. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes a Keith Urban or somebody will pop up there. Right. Um, and I, I luckily I have some I have some friends that live in the Nashville area. One of them, she's a nurse and she works long shifts. She, she only mm -hmm. works four four days a week. Uh, but she gets to go and she gets to meet all these artists all the time and she knows where all these artists are going to pop up So uh -huh. she's good about giving me some inside info. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> now who is that? That is Hunter Girl. She was Precious. on American Idol a few that. years back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now she writes a lot of her music uh -huh. and she is totally country uh, uh -huh. as far as I know. I mean, some um, artists like Carrie Underwood, mm -hmm. uh, super talented. You know, there's just some of those artists that can sing any types of music. Right. You right. know, and then there's some that just stick with country or they uh -huh. just stick with pop. Well, I liked when country music was really country music when it was Loretta Lynn, Kitty Wells, and all that. And I'm sure that those ladies who, who set the path, they were, you talk about strong women, those yes. were very, very strong women because they broke into the music business when women weren't doing that. They absolutely, they were called girl singers and backups. They were never the headliners. And then all of a sudden, there's Loretta Lynn. Now, talk about back to back. We love Dragons football, and those are the Haynes girls. And so I love that. <laughs> I, that was the sweetest thing I saw it on their daddy's Facebook page, and I said, that is too, too cool. Oh. Uh, they absolutely have beautiful kids. Now, tell <laughs> me about those people right there. Okay. Uh, that's, that's my parents. Uh, Glenn Malnax, he was, um, he's retired now, and so is my mom, which is next to him, and then my sister on the end. Uh, my dad uh, was a business owner, uh, Jasper Insurance Agency, right. very successful business. For about a hundred years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very proud of him. Yeah. Uh, he, he, yeah. Did, he did a great job. My mom, uh, she worked for Head Start for over 25 years. Uh, she was the, um, let's see, I think it, let me get this right. I think it starts out. She was the state national mm -hmm. Head Start Teacher of the Year. Then she went on uh, to win district and then regional, and then she was the national. Uh, is that it, not amazing? It was amazing. That, that is amazing. amazing. So we, when we talk about strong women, we don't mean in just one arena. We're talking about from teaching, from homemaking, to being successful business women, to being politicians. Correct. And it, women can do anything they set their mind to, and oh my gosh, what happened to us? <laughs> <laughs> We got to say that we did not plan to dress no, alike. <laughs> this is so funny. But I got up this morning, I had two outfits laid out. And I said, nah, I want to wear Melania blue. And then when Melinda walked in with Melania <laughs> blue on, I said, that is so funny. Our minds travel back to an inauguration when President Donald John Trump and Melania got out of the limo and walked down Pennsylvania Avenue. And she had on this color. And from that moment forward, we called it Melania Blue. So anytime I find anything this color, I buy it. <laughs> I buy it. Now, when we talk about the political arena today, I didn't watch any of the stuff last night. And, and everybody knows in 18 years, you've seen enough of what I talk about on TV to know exactly how I stand and exactly what I believe in. And this is, you know, again, this is what I believe in. This, this thing is tattered and torn because I've used it I've been proud of it, I support it, and I support what it stands for. What it stands for is saving America, and um, I'm concerned. I said I've been worried about elections, I've been kind of disgruntled and, and thinking about elections, but I've never been terrified about an election. This election scares me because I'm the last generation of our family, I'm the oldest, and so I have three generations below me my daughter, my granddaughter, and my little, little great-grandbaby, and then the, the kids, 
the, the other kids, very few. I'm all they have, I'm all they have. We are not prepared financially for them to make it on their own because they can't afford housing, they can't afford groceries, they can't, they can't even afford, Ansley's going to school, she's going to college, and I can guarantee you this single mom will never ask you to pay her student debt off. Mm -hmm. She will never say, oh, I went to college, I want a free ride. She'll never do that. Talk a little bit about your education and tell me who paid for your education. Sure, sure. Well, I was very lucky. Uh, I started out, I went to uh, Pickens High School uh, here locally. I was a Dragonette. I played basketball, softball, and track. And when I got out of high school, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. I wanted to go and make money. You know, that, that, that's not the thing you, you want to go and you want to get started. But um, my parents um, were all college students and in, in, into education. And so I got this letter one day. It came from Thelma Rogers at Reinhardt College. And she um, sent out a letter um, inviting me to come um, to try out and play for the Lady Eagles. Mm -hmm. uh, they were starting the basketball program back up at Reinhardt College. Mm -hmm. And that sparked interest in me. So I got involved. I went my first quarter of Reinhardt. I commuted with a bunch of my friends from high school that went. And then I got down there and I'm like, I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So my parents said, okay, you know, you can stay down there. Even though it was 20 minutes from my <laughs> house, I, I wanted to live on campus. And that's when probably, it's kind of funny, uh, when I started playing basketball, I met this uh, young lady named Lynn Cocker, uh -huh. and she's a year older than me, but we played basketball against each other in high school, and we're probably the first Gilmer Pickens to ever room together, I would <laughs> That's say, funny. and we're still really, really good best friends to this day. We go snow skiing together every year, uh -huh. and I absolutely love her family, uh -huh. and um, we, just, we just hit it off. And so I, I stayed down there, and of course, Reinhardt then was only a two-year college. Mm -hmm. Now it's a university. It, right. It's grown so much. And I really enjoyed my time there. I probably would have stayed four years mm -hmm. had it have been. Um, then I had to make a decision. Okay, so I've got my associate's degree in business administration. What am I going to do now? Uh -huh. So I looked at two colleges. I looked at first at North Georgia. I got accepted there, and, but they sent me a letter and said that they had no dorm space. Well, I wanted to live in the dorm. Mm -hmm. I, I love the dorm life. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it just gives you that great experience right. that you need when, when you're in college. So then I looked. My dad went to Berry College. Um, this was another private school. It's the largest campus, in case you didn't know, in the entire oh, world, acreage-wise. It is probably the most beautiful, the most beautiful, mm -hmm. too. I mean, it's, oh, just, it is. it's fantastic. We yeah. had to watch for deers. Every time yeah, we drove yeah. out at night, it's like, watch for deers, get your headlights <laughs> on. Uh, we had all kinds of animals over there. We had water buffaloes at the time. They had bald eagles. I mean, it's just a, it's just a great campus, and, yeah. I, and I really did. I liked it. I got into my major. I started actually studying more <laughs> than uh -huh. I did at Reinhardt. Um, and in between, um, when I was at Reinhardt, in between my uh, freshman and sophomore, I, I took a class down at Kennesaw College, mm -hmm. so it kind of lightened my load playing basketball a little bit. And then between my um, junior and senior year at Berry College, uh, I had a good friend from Florida. Uh, we were in business classes together, and she told me about this study abroad program. Mm -hmm. And so. I thought about it a few days, and I knew it was kind of expensive, and my dad was uh, starting his insurance business then, you know, and I was just kind of like, you know, I don't know if I want to put this pressure, I don't know if I want to talk, you know, right. uh, and let them know that there's this opportunity, but I did, I took it home, uh -huh. and they totally encouraged me, they, um, you know, they paid for my college, mm -hmm. I was very lucky, because, you know, a lot of people, uh, right. their parents cannot afford to pay for their <coughs> college, they had to take out loans mm -hmm. and things, so I feel very blessed uh, with that, and, and very thankful to my parents. And I got to go study abroad. I was in London, England. I studied at a, at a school called Richmond College. Uh -huh. uh, it was an experience that you just, no amount of money can pay for. And I what mean, country was it in? Uh, it was London, England. Okay. Yeah, it okay. was Richmond College, and okay. I was there for six weeks. Uh -huh. And uh, we took business classes in the morning. You had to take two classes, and Berry College required us to pick a, a topic. Uh -huh. uh, mine, I did mine on cathedrals. So I had to visit a lot of cathedrals. Wow. <laughs> How interesting and how beautiful to get to see those. Yes, wow. Yes, and it's like, it was like in between like you were visiting, but you didn't live there. It was, it was kind of uh -huh. weird because we were there for six weeks, but every day we would, we had a brick rail pass uh -huh. and we would go to Stonehenge or we'd go to Bath. We'd go to Dover. We'd go somewhere different every right. single day. And then the final week, uh, the seventh week that we were there, this is all summer, um, 
they just took us over for a fun trip. This was a group of Barry students. There was about 25 of us. And we went to Amsterdam, Brussels, and Paris. Wow. In that last week. And I mean, you know, there's, you just can't buy yeah. that experience. No, I mean, no. it's, it was amazing. Now, did you fall in love with different things in different cities, like the food in one city and the, the art in one city and, and the architecture in one city? Were there different cities that stand out now that you remember certain things about them? Yeah, it's been a long time, but <laughs> yes, the architecture and all of, all of those cathedrals were amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing back then, it's, there's probably a lot of them now, but one of the cathedrals, I believe it was St. Paul's, um, I was fascinated because it had like a revolving door in the front of the church, wow. in front of the cathedral. Wow. And we went in there and we actually went to a couple of the cathedrals and we did the um, church services mm -hmm. that they had there. Uh, so that was a great experience. Oh, and yeah. I cannot remember what my roommate, uh, she was the only one that could speak French, so I was glad she was my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my friend Rosemary. and. Uh, because nobody else knew French hardly mm -hmm. in our group. I mean, it, you know, you just, back then, you did not learn foreign languages mm -hmm. as much mm -hmm. as they teach it in schools now. Yeah, did you take a foreign language at all? I did not. I See, did not. it's so funny because I, uh, Evelyn is from Peru, and I took two years of Spanish, and so I'll hear on her on the phone and I'll recognize a couple of words, but then I have another friend who is from Mexico, and I hear, and she doesn't speak the same Spanish Evelyn does. So it's like, and, and they tell me that English is harder to learn than any other foreign language. And I thought, are you kidding me? Because I <laughs> took two years of Spanish and can't say but five words. Exactly. Because it was so hard for me. I just didn't get it. I didn't get it. But today, in today's world, we really aren't just Ella J. Georgia, just Jasper, Georgia, just Ball Ground, Georgia. We are worldwide. Now, being in the retail business, tell me a little bit about who you're in contact with every day on a daily basis. Uh, well, I have, a, I have a good friend that is, um, uh, she works on the front line with me on the, on the uh, cashiering end on the front, and she's from Italy. Mm -hmm. And she has been able to not only speak Italian, which is her native land, right. uh, but she speaks English, but because she knows Italian, she's been able to now really pick up easily the Spanish language. Uh -huh. So she helps us with a lot of our Spanish customers that come in. Yeah, yeah. And wow. Now, when you finished college, why are you such a huge Georgia Bulldog fan? <laughs> My sister actually graduated from there, but I, um, I don't know, I just kind of grew up, listen, back then I was kind of like more than television. I was listening mm -hmm. to it on the radio. The Bulldogs uh -huh. would be on uh -huh. like every Saturday. Yeah. And um, my sister went to UGA. Uh, she actually graduated from there. It was too big of a school for me, uh, mm -hmm. coming from Little Pickens, I guess. Uh -huh. um, but uh, it's a great school, but it just seems so large. that I, That's why I went to the smaller private schools. Uh -huh. um, but I have just always been a huge Bulldog fan. I mean, I, I was wearing Bulldog shirts. She would bring me Bulldog shirts <laughs> home. Love it. So I was wearing them when I was like three years old. Uh, so I didn't know any other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool because one of the first houses we sold at Malone's Pond, he has Bulldogs sitting on his front porch. And I said, that's so cool because once a dog, always a dog. Always a yeah. dog. Always, always a, dog, a dog. Always a dog. Now, we're, today we want to talk about something that's really important to, to both of us, but I want to share something first. We're going to show you a little blippet that I did on Sunday morning. And it came because I went to the grocery store. Everybody knows I shop at Ingalls, and I shop at Ingalls either in Canton or Jasper, depending on which direction I want to go. As I walked into Ingalls the other day, the butcher looked up and he said, Hey, Ms. Martin, I watch you every day on TV. And I said, Well, and you know a little bit about what I'm doing here. He said, Yeah, you're buying what's on sale. Of course I am. I buy what, on, what is on sale because as you feed your family today, we all know that things are very, very different. I walked out the other day and it was $175. And there were two packs of meat, one of ground chuck that was reduced quick sale. And the other one was a pack of pork chops, the same thing, reduced quick sale. Put them in the freezer, they're fine, you use them immediately, everything's good, there's nothing wrong with it. But the idea that I looked down and a pound of ground beef was $5.59. I can remember walking in A&P with my grandmother and it was three pounds of ground beef for 99 cents. Now this was ground chuck, so it was a little bit better, but five fifty nine a pound. That is absolutely crazy. If you're making hamburgers for a family, how do you even afford to make hamburgers? And when you think about the restaurants, I'm more concerned about restaurants going out of business because how much more can they tack on to the prices that we can afford as consumers? 
how do they afford for it to come in the back door as the providers bring it? Because I paid three thirty nine for a head of lettuce, unheard mm -hmm. of. They used to be eighty nine cents, and not that long ago they mm -hmm. were eighty nine mm -hmm. cents. So the reality hit me that if if I'm shopping, you know, just for stuff, and it was one hundred and seventy five dollars. What does a family of four spend on a weekly budget? And I used to make fun of, I made a certain pan of biscuits every morning and I knew how much it cost. My white lily flour was 89 cents for five pounds. My Crisco was $1.29 for the three pound can, the big one. And then I used buttermilk and sweet milk and it was $1.29 to $1.49 a gallon, depending on did I go to the Blue Star and get what I wanted, did I go to the Pig and get what was on sale with those little coupons. It's crazy that today in my lifetime, a very short time ago, we were paying that much difference in pricing. So when they show you all these scales that all the politicians are showing you and they're saying, oh, groceries are up 30%. No, sir, they're up 60%. I'm a shopper. I remember prices. I know how much a can of Spam was. I know how much a can of Double Q was. So we've got to get together as powerful, strong women and we have to say, we have to change this. We have to, we have to change it. And to me, as somebody who's in the trucking business for all these years, we have to change it at the grassroots end of it. We have to change it when that truck pulls into the fields of Arizona and loads strawberries. They have to keep them refrigerated coming in because they have a very short life expectancy, so they're buying a re reefer unit for their fuel. They have to put diesel in that truck. They have to buy tires. They have to pay insurance transportation prices have gone up so crazy that's the problem with our groceries and when the person running for president says what did she call the word she didn't even say gouging she said gauging gauging and I was like <laughs> what I mean are you kidding me no there's mm -hmm. no proud there's no price gouging the trucker has to pass on what he's having to pay to the consumer to the, the fields full of corn, the fields full of cucumbers, the fields full, this stuff has to get to market. It can't sit there on the dock waiting for them to shop prices and think they can get somebody to deliver it cheaper because you can't, you absolutely cannot. So, so when you think about food, think about your vote and think about in November that we can change what is happening in our country. And we've got to change it because if we don't, when I'm dead and gone, my generations that I'll leave here behind will never be able to make it. Mm -hmm. They will never be able to make it and it scares me terribly. So we're going to show you how I make biscuits and gravy and it's a little bit funny and it's a little bit hillbilly because I was in that mood. You'll see it now. Remember that old song, I'm going to bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan. Well, honey, if you can bring home the bacon today, it's because it's on sale. I do not buy this stuff if it's not on sale. Come on, grocery stores. I know that we're all struggling, but you know where it comes from? It comes from the price that our fuel oil is so crazy, so expensive. A diesel truck doesn't get the bacon to you without putting fuel in the tank. We've got to get America back on track. We've got to get back to feeding our families normal things, normal prices. Today it cost as much to feed two as it cost to feed six, but we're not going to give up our biscuits and gravy. We're not going to give up our bacon. So just learn to shop wisely like I do. I run into my little local Ingalls grocery store, and honey, if it's on sale, it goes in the buggy. If it's not on sale, I have to really be desperate for it, and I'm not that desperate. Now the biscuits you're seeing right now, are the way my granny made them. That's the gravy that my granny taught me to make. And Lord have mercy, I make good gravy. It is yummy, yummy. And I will tell you, you can put gravy on granny's biscuits and eat one of them. But if you use those, those middle Georgia biscuits, like I like the flat ones, you can eat two of those because they have about the same calorie content as one of them little fat biscuits. So, Granny made it the way that I do in the iron skillet, and Dimple made it the way that you see it there. You can decide how do you want it. I use white lily flour, buttermilk, half buttermilk, half sweet milk, Crisco, and a big old dollop of butter in it. And I just mix that up with my hands, roll it out, and put my fingerprints on it and bake it at 400 degrees and wow, 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 what yummy biscuits. If you 
think that you can do it without bacon, you can't, sugar. You've got to have that grease to do your gravy. So just make sure you buy your bacon on sale because remember, I can bring home the bacon, I can fry it up in a pan, but I sure can't at these prices. So let's vote to get our prices back where they ought to be. We can't give up these biscuits, can we now? Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? First down. There he goes up the middle. He'll be cut down at the 20. He's into the end zone for a fan and rebel score. Catches it in stride. He'll go to the end zone. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, guys, today we're talking strong women, and, and I started out talking about Harris Faulkner, who was on Fox News, and she's an amazing, amazing talent. She's also gorgeous, drop-dead gorgeous, and her co-host, Emily Campagna and Kaylee McElhaney, are very, very strong women who believe the way we do, that America is the greatest land ever, and the greatest land of opportunity Sadly, the opportunities are dwindling away because we don't have an opportunity to go on vacation because we're trying to put food on the table. We don't have an opportunity to buy a new car because we're trying to put food on the table. We don't have an opportunity to buy our kids new school clothes because we're trying to put food on the table. Melinda, what can we do to change all of this? Well, basically, if you look at it from, from the economy side, is you, you go back to basic economics and you're talking about supply. And you're an demand. economic major. I was, and uh, it's been a long time. Like mm -hmm. I said, you know, luckily I've not had to use it lately type of thing. Uh, but you, you think about supply and demand. And when Biden took office, the first day of office, the first thing he did was shut down the Keystone Pipeline. Right. Uh, there was over 11,000 employees making a great salary that mm -hmm. lost their jobs. Right. And, and you're talking about people probably making at least probably around an average of $60,000 yeah. a year. Most of them were making 80. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. 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 some yeah. of them maybe over 100,000 if yeah. they're uh, the boss. Mm -hmm. 
and when you do that, you cut down your your supplies and your resources for your country. And what's happened is the gas prices rose, and then we started begging from other countries for oil, mm -hmm. like Iran and mm -hmm. Venezuela, mm -hmm. uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, those type of countries. And why should we have to beg for oil when we have that resource right here in the United mm -hmm. States? Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the whole environmentalist thing has come out, and and I get it. I mean, we, we do have to be conscious of those mm -hmm. type of issues right. also. Right, sure. Uh, but we've got to do what's best for America. And I grew up where, when you were in school, you said the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. Uh, and one thing what I admired about playing basketball at Reinhardt College was um, our basketball coach, Thelma Rogers, every amazing every woman. night amazing yes, you know woman. her okay. amazing woman yes. yeah uh, she had us say the lord's prayer mm -hmm. every every night before our ball game before we ever hit that court mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. the lord's prayer mm -hmm. and we've just took so much of that out of our schools mm -hmm. uh, over the years and i just think we need to get back to the basics yeah yeah i've talked to so many people who said we are becoming a nation not of god and, and I think that is the answer to everything. We are taking God out of the world because it might offend somebody. It might hurt somebody's feelings. It might, uh, oh, well, I don't believe the way you do. Well, you don't have to believe the way I do, but there is a God. And somebody asked me one day, how do you know that there's a God? And that's why I follow sunsets and sunrises around and take pictures of them all the time. Mm -hmm. And I show it and I said, okay, look at this. God did this, God did this, God did that. God did all of us, and, and they're like, well, I just don't know that there's a God. Well, of course there is a God, and, and when we take God out of the equation, we end up in trouble really quickly yes. because when we are weak, we are attacked, and Satan always attacks the weakest link. The United States of America has become a very, very weak link, and it's under the administration that's there today. That's correct. I, I, feel, I feel the same way because... Um, when you think about it, when Trump was in office, there were no wars. None. Uh, right now, we've got Ukraine and Russia. We've got Iran and Israel. Um, and those could have been prevented right. um, before they ever shot the first missile mm -hmm. or, or started uh, you know, shooting at each other. Uh, and, that's, and that's why we need someone in there who's going to be strong, that's going to be tough. And, and I tell you, when Trump was in office, I felt like all the other countries were scared of us. Oh, yeah. They, they, were, they were intentionally, they were very respectful, but they knew there are boundaries and he will not let you step over that boundary. And then we saw the Biden administration send millions and millions, billions of dollars to foreign countries. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at your tax return? Do you feel like you're paying too much in taxes? Oh, I've always felt that way. We yes. always, <laughs> we, we, we are supporting bad habits. Yes of bad politicians. We are supporting bad habits of bad politicians. And it makes no sense for us to struggle at the grocery store, worry about can we get all the kids new tennis shoes or can just one of them get new tennis shoes. I mean, it's really, it's down to a, a point of time that we've all seen our life change. We've all seen our life change. As a first time home buyer agent for many, many years, I sold so many houses to kids who'd never been in a house before. They were 28, 30, just getting on their feet. And I was able to sell them a house, sell them a house, sell them a house. They no longer paid rent. Now, that's not, the American dream isn't going to happen because they can't pay $2,400 a month for a $206,000 house. They can't pay, you know, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And we looked at utilities the other day and somebody was talking about, did your power bill go up? And I said, yeah, a little bit, but not much. But when you look across the board, everything goes up. It goes up because the things that we needed were taken away from us when that administration shut things down. Correct, correct. And one thing I noticed uh, when I was uh, traveling to Switzerland, which is every snow skier's dream trip. It uh -huh. took us a long time. We should have done it like 15 years ago yeah, when we were much yeah. younger, but it fi we finally went. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I'm grateful for that. But while we were over there, um, we stayed in an acute in Zermont. We stayed in a cute little um, hotel that was on that was family run it had been run for generations they had beautiful hand carved wood ceilings and every single tile they told us that was in our that was in our rooms mm -hmm. and it was in the lobby was handcrafted by their grandfather wow wow and, and they were the sweetest thing so when we would go down we would like to just go down there sometimes and hang out and meet together before we'd go out to eat or ski and um, we were hanging out in the lobby and we saw they had magazines spread out. 
And there was a magazine that had Biden's picture on the front on a walker. Uh -huh. um, it had uh, Michelle Obama's picture in the background, and it had uh, Harris, and I believe it was her husband was the other uh -huh. person. It was, there was mm -hmm. four on the front page, mm -hmm. and it was in German. So I asked the lady that worked there, because obviously I don't speak that language. Right. I said, what does this mean? And she said, it is saying that your president is feeble and weak and it um, is telling the truth and telling the truth it's telling the truth that we were lied to for three years when when she stepped up there and she said oh he's sharp as a tack he's on top of his game Correct. he's amazing what a bunch of liars you know did your granny ever tell you liars liars pants on fire <laughs> i have heard yeah. that too. well the white house was full of liars liars pants on fire and if they all had their pants on fire they'd run out of fire extinguishers because they were all lying <laughs> And, and when that magazine, I saw a cover like that too, and I, I knew what it meant. That is so sad that the world is looking at us as weak. Yes, yes. And, and I've never known as the United States being looked at as weak. Uh, you know, we've always had strong military. We uh, have strong spirit. Everybody stands behind the country. Uh, you know, we're proud when our Olympians go and compete. And... Um, you know, it was just sad to hear that because, yes, it was true. And, mm -hmm. I mean, even when other countries back, this was back in February, knew that our president was not mentally mm -hmm. capable of performing his duties, we still let him sit in that office right. and, and they're covering it up. Right. Covering so who's up. running our country? Yeah, well, it, it is truly the biggest deception ever in the political arena, ever, because we all saw it. We saw it three years ago. Mm -hmm. And and anybody who mentioned it, oh no, fake news, fake news. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, he's fine, he's fine. Mm -hmm. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. And and I've been around family members who had Alzheimer's. My grandmother got it, and I knew that it was setting in and what was going on. I mean, it was so obvious to everybody, and we were lied to, lied to, lied to. Well, that's not all we were lied to, lied to about. And when I hear somebody that I know, trust, and love telling me. Well, I can't vote for Trump because I just don't like some of the things he says. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care what he says. What I care about is my grocery bill, the idea that my grandchildren and my children will have an opportunity to have a home of their own. When I think about the generations behind me, I mean, I'm going to be, you know, I'm like your mom and daddy. I'm up here and we're going to be gone one day. And we have to worry about what are we leaving behind? And it scares me to death when I saw that that woman, and everybody knows I'm a strong woman, but I do not want a woman for president. I do not want a woman for president. Not any, nowhere, no time, no way. I don't want it, don't want it. I ain't going to have it in my lifetime. When I saw that she chose a man who will abort a child at birth, you know what I call that? Murder. murder. That is murder. That is not abortion. That is murder. When you take a full-term child and you end its life and call it abortion, I'm sorry. You know, if, if and, and I think the best thing to do about the abortion issue is to turn it over to the states and let the states vote for it. And if Michigan decides to let this happen and if Arizona decides to let this happen, choose to live in the state that has what makes you happy, but don't force okay. this crap down our throats because you're not gonna convince me I would have not been here because my father tried to get my mother to have an abortion. My daughter would not have been here because my husband, who was a, a German Hitler-loving Nazi, did not want a child and wanted me to have an abortion. My granddaughter would not be here because my daughter got married the year that she, or got pregnant the year that she graduated high school and was terrified of me and was thinking about having an abortion because she thought I'd kill her for getting pregnant and I came close. <laughs> but we have Tori. You know, there were, and, and Zana, the same thing. We have four people in our family that would have been an abortion if that choice had been made. And I thank God every day. I look at what my mother did. When she was just under eight months pregnant with me, she was at a home for unwed mothers in Virginia going to give me away. And she got on a bus and came back to Gainesville, Georgia with 50 cents in her pocket and chose to keep me. Not only did she not abort me, she didn't give me up for adoption. And I think adoption is a great plan. I think that if you are pregnant and you do not want to raise this child, you're not in a position to raise a child, maybe you have problems going on in your life, there's so many families who want to adopt. 
there are so many families who want to adopt. And, and to me, abortion is not the answer to anything, and certainly not a full-term abortion. When that man stood on stage and said he supports abortion until the moment of birth, I thought, holy cow, how could anybody vote that ticket? How could anybody vote for either one of them? And it scares me because I know people who are going to vote for them. Mm -hmm. I know people who will vote for them. That absolutely terrifies me. It, it does. I mean, you know, there's so many people out there that want children and that's not able to have children. And, and that's what adoption centers do. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's great that they can provide families for people mm -hmm. who are not able to have families. Right. Right, and often the adoptive parents will pay for the birth and they will pay you know, the mother's housing and everything until she gets back on her feet. There's so many great opportunities. So if you find yourself pregnant and you're not in a position to keep it, for God's sake, create a family for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Create a family for somebody else. And if you just cannot do it and cannot raise that child, then be a blessing to somebody. You know, and that's what exactly. it's about. Now, you called me because you have something going on that uh, I think it's a great plan, and I'm so glad that y'all came up with this idea. Tomorrow night at 6.30, we're going to gather together in Pickens County. Correct. And tell me the address so we can have people come. It is uh, 371 Noah Drive uh, in Jasper, Georgia. Um, I got together, um, well, let me go back. Let me tell you, I was <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Uh, I like to watch the Olympics. I'm more into the Winter Olympics than I am the Summer Olympics, but I still like a lot of the events. And I would be flipping back and forth when there was like an event like diving, which I think they're all great divers, but I, I don't know enough of the technical issues yeah. to know one dives better than yeah. the other. Yeah. So that, that was one of the sports that's kind of boring to me. So I would flip over and I would watch Fox News and things like that, and I'd be flipping back and forth. And I saw uh, a lot of the swimming events and, and some of the others. In the countries, a, a lot of these athletes, they train, they do world championships and all this before the Olympics, and they become friends mm -hmm. between countries. Mm -hmm. And so they congratulate each other when they win an event, whether they win the event or their friend wins the event, you know. They, or a stranger they, that they just met. Correct. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, and so that gave me an idea. It's like, you know, we need to come together uh, as a Trump supporter and, and, and save America, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, because the state of Georgia, I don't, I don't know, I, I do a little research when I don't know things. I love uh -huh. Google. Uh -huh. uh, so I Googled, there's 159 counties in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And out of those 159 counties, if you go back to the 2020 election, 30 of those counties voted for Biden. Mm -hmm. So those are the counties that we really need to reach. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I don't know if you know it, but uh, Texas, I looked this up, Texas is the number one, um, number one state out of the whole United States that has the most counties. They have like 254. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Georgia's number two. Wow. wow. Georgia is number two with 159 counties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when I looked at that map, it, it showed a map of red and blue. And I looked at where, okay, so where are the blue areas? Mm -hmm. Where are the, who voted for the Biden? Who do mm -hmm. we need to get mm -hmm. out? Who do mm -hmm. we need to educate uh, and, and reach out to? Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, it was four major areas um, that voted uh, on the Biden ticket back in 2020. And it was like around the Atlanta area, like mm -hmm. your Gwinnett, your Fulton, right. your DeKalb's. Yeah. It was around we the We would expect that. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, you would. You would. And, and, and I would expect Savannah and Savannah. Perry, Perry, Georgia, or Tifton, Georgia. So that was areas, one. And so Albany, that, Albany, Georgia. Augusta okay. was a big been, area. See, I've been to all of those. And, and Columbus. Would, yes. That was the yes, four major areas. Yes. <laughs> yes that, I, I nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when I watched the Olympics, it brought me the idea that we need to come together as Trump supporters. So the first person I thought of was someone I went to high school with. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a couple years younger than me, but we've been friends for a long time. She actually sang the national anthem. Right. And there. I've had her here many times. Yes. Yeah, Bay Cagle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I reached out to Bay and I told her my idea and she said, that's great. And so she said, let me do some work on this. Mm -hmm. And she found us a place to meet and she found us, um, the ladies' names are Amy and Kylie Kramer. I have never met them, but mm -hmm. they are uh, Women for America mm -hmm. first and they're Women for Trump. So Bay reached out to them. We are too. <laughs> <laughs> we are too. We are too. So Bay reached out to them, and they're going to come to our meeting tomorrow night. They're going mm -hmm. to uh, be bringing some Trump merchandise. Um, they're going to be bringing some push cards, and 
Um, they're going to be talking about how we can reach uh, these areas and, and people in our state because Trump needs to win Georgia. Right, right. And so um, that's what our whole meeting about is tomorrow night. We're going to pray for the nation. We're going to get together and share ideas mm -hmm. on, on how we can reach others and, and just get the information out because, like you said, um, a lot of our friends and coworkers and and people go, you know, that goes to our churches and mm -hmm. those type of things, they have just always voted Democrat. No mm -hmm. matter who it is, what it is, mm -hmm. that's, they stay with that mm -hmm. line. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of them just don't really understand. If you ask, and, and I have asked a few, um, why are you voting Democrat? Or, or what do you have against Trump and the Republicans? Um, because honestly, they can't tell you. No, They'll just say, no. we don't like Trump. Yeah, right. That just blows my mind, and see, I was so proud. I, I really get teary-eyed when I see Melania Trump, because can you imagine the day that Melania and Barron are sitting at home and her husband has a bullet whisked by his head that if he had not turned to read that chart, he would not be here today. He would not be here today. So I've always thought that she was the most beautiful first lady we've ever had. She is the most mm -hmm. elegant, she is the most educated first lady we've ever had. She speaks five languages. She is amazingly brilliant. Her son, Baron, who will I think one day be president, is brilliant. And these are people that their life almost changed drastically because of that bullet. Now, people, you know, the first two days after he was the assassination attempt, it was all over the media. Well, now we know that the media has taken that down because it was giving people a real picture of how desperate people are to stop the man who can bring our country back to greatness. Yes. And that scared me because I, all I thought about was Melania, sitting at home, getting that call, he's okay, he's okay, but he might not have been. You know, mm -hmm. it, it very well could have ended his life. Well, he's, to me, I look at him as a man, um, a great businessman. I mean, he's like everybody. It's it, he's a New Yorker. <laughs> I have a friend who's a New Yorker, and he's mouthier than me. And he has two <laughs> liberal sisters. He's very Republican, and I yes. love him to death, but he's mouthy. And he's, he's that opinionated New Yorker. Trump is an opinionated New Yorker. I love the idea that he brought me, if I told you the difference in my pay during the last four years and my pay in the first four years, you'd think I was lying, but I can, pro I can produce the documents. And when people see the difference, you're like, holy cow, the difference was astronomical, astronomical. Not only were the paychecks better, the cost of living was better. So yeah. we all had a better lifestyle. I don't care if you like him, I don't care if you dislike him, I don't care anything about how your personal feelings are for him. My personal feelings are to save America, and that's yeah. all I care about. And the wages are just not keeping up with the price of goods, and, and, and they're wanting to bring this in and, um, price gouge, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. wanting to price a head of lettuce or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, and that communist. Just creates, it, it's communist. It creates a problem. I mean, yeah. you're going to have shortages. You think toilet paper, being short on toilet paper, oh, yeah. this is going to be a hundred times worse. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and it's very scary. And then people go out on the black market. I mean, yeah. there's just so many things that can happen yeah. from, from doing that. You just can't let, government only needs to do certain things. They don't exactly. need to be involved in We don't need everything. them in our face. We don't need <laughs> them in our face. We need them to support us, protect us, but we don't need them in our face. And we don't need them telling us how to shop and what to do, but we don't need the prices. And I know as, as trucking, I was showing somebody an example the other day because when we started trucking, our liability insurance on our trucks was under $700. When I quit, it was over $6,000 per unit. Mm -hmm. Do that math times 25 and see what you're spending a year, about 160 grand mm -hmm. for something that used to cost us $29,000 a year. That's a huge difference. That's what's wrong with the pricing in America today. The truck drivers aren't making any more. The truck owners aren't making any more. It's all being blown up a hog's butt because it is going into things that we are not buying here on our, on our soil. We're sending the money to all these foreign countries. Yes. Yeah, it's we, crazy. And we got to take care of our people here. I mean, we have veterans that have fought for us, and you've got you've got to give them the utmost respect because yeah. you know they they have put their life at risk, literally. Right. As right. Same as police officers mm -hmm. and firemen. You know, uh, all all of those uh, are. And great. do you know every single one of the people you named 
works for less than those useless, useless U.S. congressmen and women who were voted in, who had no, oh, don't even get me started. One was a bartender, one was a pole dancer, one was a, Lord knows what <laughs> she was. And, and their income is over $180,000 a year. And then they get lifetime benefits. Mm -hmm. That's when I get angry. That's yes. when I get really angry because if you, if you live in a district that will elect somebody like the squad, they're set for life. All they have to do is, is work that term and not get, you know, thrown out, which they should have all been thrown out. Work that term and you get all that money for the rest of your life and you get insurance, you get benefits, you get all this stuff. Whose pockets it coming out of? Yours, Ours. mine, <laughs> all of us. It's crazy. We have created chaos and craziness and it, you know how people, they're making fun and putting circus clowns and all. We have created a circus. Mm -hmm. We have truly created a circus and we're paying for it. Well, if you look at our government spending, I, I, I looked it up and it was showing that just last year alone, this is for 2023, because obviously this year is not mm -hmm. completed uh, under the Biden administration, is they have spent $6.13 trillion. Mm -hmm. And that's astronomical. And you know you're going to have some government spend. I mean, you can't not right. have it. it right. It's just part right. of it. And then when they were, they were comparing it, so I said, okay, so let me look at what it was under Trump. Mm -hmm. So I looked up Trump, and for his full four-year term, it was only around probably $7 trillion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they spent $6.13 trillion in just one, one single year. year. Yeah. Of course. So where's that money going? Is it going for us paying off some country? It's like blowed up a hog's butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's blowed up a hog's butt. That's where it's going. <laughs> yeah. That's where it's going. And, and when we just, I mean, crazy. they've just got to be held accountable. Yeah. You know, if, if you're at a job, you're held accountable for your mm -hmm. job and what you're doing. And by uh, Harris not going to the border, that was her job. Yeah. She's not yeah. even been to the border. No. But but the question, this this is what cracks me up. All those reporters out in the big world, they are so liberal and they are such liars. And when they sit there and allow her to say and to giggle that cackly laugh and to say that I haven't been to Europe either when she was asked about the border and she said, well, I haven't been to Europe. And I'm like, you don't need to go to Europe. You needed to have left the wall alone and you needed to extend the other 200 miles we needed and the border should have been closed. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the murder, the obstruction, the death, the things that are happening. They've obstructed us from going shopping in big cities because we're terrified. They might as well have put up a wall because people who are worried about their safety, we're obstructed from going to towns that we love because it's so unsafe now. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I, I never really want to go to the city that much. The only time, honestly, that I ever go to downtown Atlanta even, um, is when I go to either a sporting event mm -hmm. or a concert. I mean, right. that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, you know, otherwise, I like I like to stay yeah. out here where it's yeah. more where you feel more safe. Well, they make fun of me. Even as a realtor, everybody knows I have a 20 mile radius. 20 miles from LJ, 20 miles from Jasper, 20 miles from Ball Ground, 20 miles from Fannin County. 20 miles, and I'm safe. But after yeah. that, I don't like it. Yeah. I grew up in Atlanta. I don't like it. I don't even oh, I don't like it. Well, tell folks again, because we're going to run out of time. You're going to have okay. to come back again before the election. <laughs> we only have 80 some odd days. We mm -hmm. have got to pull this off. It is, it is, to me, it is the most critical day, the most critical moment in U.S. history. We have got to save America. And we can do it if we gather together. If you get 10 people that will listen to you, if I get 10 people that will listen mm -hmm. to me, if every woman, every strong woman out there, if you talk to your family, you know, I have a family member that said she was going to have to kill my vote because I was voting for Trump. And I said, you can't be serious. You cannot be serious. And it made me cry because I thought, where did we go wrong that, that somebody could even have an opinion to, I wouldn't let her take out my trash, much less <laughs> vote for her for president. And one of my family members said she was going to vote for her. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. So we've got to get to everybody. We have to yes. spread the word. So tomorrow night, 6.30. 6.30 at New Beginnings in Jasper, Georgia, uh, 371 Noah Drive. Please come and be with us. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to do it kind of like a little town hall and let people tell what's important to you, what can we do, what do you mm -hmm. suggest that we do. Everybody bring on some information, and I want us to all learn from Harris Faulkner because I truly, I, I really admire this beautiful lady, and I love her co-host. She has the best co-host, and, and she tells it like it is, so if you haven't checked out 
the story that she did about her dad and his time in Vietnam and when she went back and walked the same steps that her father walked, I said, wow, you know, we haven't even thought about all the people in Georgia who are homeless, who are veterans. We don't even think about it, but we're so blessed now to have the VA hospital or the VA service center down in Jasper. Yes. So we need to do everything we can to support those veterans and, and watch Harris's special about her dad because it was, it was very, very, very sweet and um, amazing that she was able to do that. So, yeah. You know, when, uh, when we look at our country today, we can only hope for the best. I, I remember the night that I woke up and I thought that Hillary had won because I went to bed and she was ahead. Mm -hmm. And then my phone rang like 20 minutes later and he had won. And I was, honest to God, I sat in the middle of my bed and cried like a baby because I knew that there was hope for America. We can bring that hope back to America. Yes. We can bring that hope back to America, but it takes you, me, Melinda, your mom and dad. You know, my grandmother was a Democrat, my grandfather was a Democrat, but they were different Democrats. It was a different world. They weren't, they weren't fighting and, and voting to do full-time abortions. They weren't doing the things that people are fighting for now. They, they were country farmers, often tenant farmers who never owned anything in their life. They didn't understand taxes because they'd never paid taxes. As Working America, the Biden administration has broken the back of the Working American, all Americans. Their backs are getting broken by all the waste and all the spending, and you just said the number. I mean, it's, it's that's huge. It is. That's a big I number. I can't even count trillions. I, I yeah, can't even that's a big trillions. number. That's a big number. Yeah. So tell folks to come and see you down at your work. <laughs> yes, please, please. Uh, we have great prices, so you, you definitely need to come visit down at TJ Maxx. Um, you know, we, we do keep the cost low, and, and I know a lot about, uh, about the supply and demand. You know, obviously, if you, if you get 20 of, of one item and it sits on the shelf, then the store is going to bring the price down for mm -hmm. the consumer, but you can still make a profit. And, mm -hmm. and that's where you have to try to balance out when you're talking about economics, about supply and demand. Mm -hmm. you, you can't have it, like, tilted way too much one way or the other, you want to keep it kind of tight balance. And, yeah. and then everybody wins. The right. consumer wins and the retailer wins, That's the manufacturers. Right. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just coming to that balance. Yep. And we do need everybody to come out and, and vote. And, and vote with your heart. Vote for your country. Not just vote because it's a party that you've always, you know, been in, voted for. You going to tell past. people you used to be a Democrat? I, I was. I, I had a real good friend when I grew up that uh, her dad was a congressman, and um, and there wasn't much difference back in the 80s. It's like there, you know, there was maybe two or three policies mm -hmm. that were different. It's mm -hmm. not like today. Today's like night and day between oh, the two yes. parties, and yes. I just don't get it. Yeah, I, I don't get how people can vote that ticket. Yeah, um, you know, like I watched the convention last night, and it's like they put on this pretty show. They it, it, by it, by watching that show, you wouldn't think there was any inflation. You wouldn't think there was any high prices. You you wouldn't think that families were struggling. You know, they, they paint this pretty picture. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> uh, so it's because sometimes, you know, I, I want to watch, and I am going to watch as much as I can uh, their convention. Uh, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to stomach, as they yeah, say, because, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't like lying, yeah, I don't, and, and, yeah. and I feel like they have just covered up so much. Um, you it's know, a disaster. It, it is. But we can change it. But we can. We, you can make a women, change. Strong women. Strong women can do it. <laughs> and don't forget, watch Harris Faulkner on Fox. She is amazing. She is a very talented, very beautiful lady. And uh, we're supporting strong women today. So y'all yes. be with us again. And remember, we will leave right here and we'll go right to YouTube so you can share this with your friends. Hope to see you soon on ETC. As always, you know, this is 18 years of doing this. This is fun. And wow. I love it. I love it. What a blessing. Thank see y'all soon. Yay.